Good evening, Neff E Club Video Journal. Today, let us see some popular article which has been circulated among the nephrologists. The topic is influence of immunosuppressive agents on the risk of de novo donor specific HLA antibody production in solid organ transplant recipient. It's a review article in Transplantation Journal. This interesting picture depicts a summary of various immunosuppressive agents acting at the various level of immune cells. So here we have antigen presenting cell interacting with TH lymphocytes. And Balatasep is a co-stimulant inhibitor which blocks the co-stimulation between antigen presenting cell and TH. CNA, mTOR and steroids act at the same level prevents proliferation of TH lymphocytes. Recombitant ATG alentezumab campath depletes the T cells. CNA and steroids interferes not only by proliferation but also interferes in the interaction between T and B lymphocytes mainly on the IL-2 blockade. mTOR doesn't have this role. mTOR is an anti-proliferative agent. Mycophilonic acid, MPA and mTOR inhibitor also inhibits proliferation of the B cells. Rituximab and alentezumab have additional role of depletion of B cells including the memory B cells and plasma cells are not depleted by alentezumab I mean uh, rituximab but thus being eliminated by alentezumab mTOR inhibitor does inhibits B cell differentiation and prevents immunoglobulin production Bortezomib proteasome inhibitor depletes the plasma cells and also has a role in interaction of Ig with the endothelial cells and mTOR inhibitor also works at inhibition of Ig mediated endothelial cell signaling and proliferation. So what are the future directions? Understanding how to appropriately regulate the B-cell compartment is critical to prevent de novo donor-specific antibody and achieve decades-long survival for solid organ transplants. Novel anti-B-cell agents that have recently emerged in other relevant fields have also been helpful in rethinking of transplant immunosuppression. Recently, several new interesting B-cell directed strategies have attracted attention which can be divided into direct and indirect B-cell agents. The direct depleting agent include ocrelizumab more thoroughly depletes the B-cell anti-CD19 monoclonal antibody that also depletes memory B cells and short-lived plasma cells anti-CD22 monoclonal antibody apratizumab modulates B cell function by altering addition molecule expression interfering with migration and inhibiting BCR dependent B cell activation indirect B cell targeting can be accomplished through modulation of the BAF April pathway. So, primarily produced by macrophages, neutrophils, and dendritic cells, and also B cells and activated T cells. This pathway, the BAF April, comprises 
three cellular receptor the baf are bcma and taci differentially expressed by different subpopulation of b cells baf are is critical for immature b cell survival and maturation bcma is required for plasma cell survival tsca is necessary for t cell independent b cell responses regulation of b cells and ig class switching so the myeloid cell has a membrane bound baf which on protease ligation has a soluble baf and soluble april the baf in turn can also act on the neuronal outgrowth necessary for neurons and astrocytes and in immunological sense it acts on baf r immature b cell survival and maturation this pathway bcma necessary for plasma cell maturation and tsca is necessary for t cell independent antibody responses b cell regulation and ig class switch so new agents are going to target these pathways to target the b cells so this is the immune cells which is going to be interacting with the endothelial cells and baf april pathway is going to inhibit interaction between endothelial and the b cells so baf april pathway appears to lie at a critical immune intersection that may regulate the b cell compartment so targeting this pathway un recently documented simultaneous neutralization of baf and april using a fusion protein composed of tsca receptor and igfc atacicept which prevented early dsa formation plasma cell targeting anti baf monoclonal antibody tabalumab second generation proteasome inhibitors other than bortezomib which is first generation is coming in market plasma cell depleting agent that target cells having cd38 and cd138 novel proteasome inhibitor targeting different sites molecules that target protein degradation upstream of proteasome and drug combination which enhance therapeutic capacities orally available proteasome inhibitor may soon become available and is going to open up the market of how we can target the b cell in a much better fashion including the plasma cells an inhibitory role of belatacept on regulatory t cells are being reported regulatory t cell generation is independent of cd40 cd154 pathway and anti cd40 monoclonal antibody may represent an alternative so the author concludes patients with history of non adherence greater hla mismatching especially class 2 dq or dr or an increased propensity to sensitization due to previous transplant transfusion pregnancy or previous acute rejection or more likely to develop de novo dsa the recombinant atg induction appears to attenuate de novo dsa production in moderately sensitized patient administration of newer agents such as rituximab or bortezomib as induction therapy in at risk patient may be of interest early cni withdrawal especially in absence of depleting induction is not advisable in patients with risk of developing de novo dsa de novo dsa risk reduction is essential to prevent chronic antibody mediated rejection and improve long term graft survival in all transplant patients combination of mtar inhibitor with reduced exposure to cni has not been associated with increased risk of de novo dsa available data do not indicate a consistent effect of mpa on de novo donor specific production thank you